everyone, it's Margaret Manning here, and welcome to 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. Now, my guest today is Dr. Leslie Kernison. Uh, Leslie is a medical doctor, but she also um, specializes in geriatrics. Uh, her website is betterhealthwhileaging.net, and on that site, she's got an amazing selection of resources and information about how to deal with the aging process and the, and the medical, medical issues that you might have. So welcome, Dr. Leslie, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad that you're here today because uh, we've, we've had a couple of conversations already in different videos about different aspects of brain health and um, you know, looking after an older parent and your experience as a, as a geriatrician is um, expansive across uh, you know, a wide age group. But our community is women over 60. And one of the biggest issues that we face, uh, I, I think, is the issue of balance. Mm-hmm. and the potential for falling. Mm-hmm. And we all know that this is a cause of a lot of illness and hospitalization, but help us to understand kind of what the issues are around improving our balance in our 60s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I would say, you know, especially for women in their 60s, that one of the first things to figure out is whether you're at particularly high risk or not. Mm. And one of the most important signs of somebody being high risk is if they've already fallen especially more than once. Um, That means that uh, falling once doubles your chance of falling again. And as I think you and your audience know, lots of older people fall. It's usually people who are more in their 70s and 80s, but does happen to some people in their 60s. And it can lead to devastating injuries. And we know that a lot of people who fall don't mention it to their doctor and don't mention it to anyone. They're embarrassed. They don't want to feel old. So I... So if you haven't had any falls or if you haven't been feeling unsteady, then we can talk about some basics, which you've probably already discussed with with your audience, exercises that maintain your strength, your leg strength and your balance. Things like yoga and Tai Chi are really good. But if you have had a fall, then it's really important to take a few steps more because that means that you're at risk and that you might be that you might need to do a little bit more to really reduce your chance of falling. So yeah. that would be my first bit of advice for your audience. And um, and then um, in terms of you know what you should do if you have had a fall or otherwise been at high risk, the sort of core things that we rely on for most people are, um, and their recommendations, these are things that someone like the Center for Diseases Control would recommend or other public health institutions. They're very sensible. It's to get your medications reviewed to be sure you're doing mm. the right kinds of exercise that will maintain or even build up um, your leg strength and your balance, um, to have your vision checked and to work on making your home safer. So on my site, I've often focused on two places where I feel like people don't do quite enough. And that is the medication review and getting the medications checked. And then um, getting your your strength and walking and balance evaluated and maybe starting a really focused structured exercise program for that so yeah let, let me just uh, I, as you were talking I'm like I'm nodding my head because I had two falls right you mm. know one I fell mm-hmm. in Paris I I tripped mm-hmm. on cobblestones now notice mm-hmm. how I qualify it it wasn't mm-hmm. me it was the cobblestones mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. know women do this and and I did mm-hmm. I broke my tooth it was you know not a nice experience mm-hmm. but the mm-hmm. other time mm-hmm. I fell I've got to tell you this because it was so funny um I was in Scotland and I was walking mm-hmm. along the pavement and I fell again I tripped mm-hmm. I didn't fall mm-hmm. quite so badly but mm-hmm. it was so funny because I immediately got up and started like brushing my arm like nothing's mm-hmm. wrong and this mm-hmm. ambulance went by just at literally the second that I had fallen and they stopped and I I stood up and I went it's okay no problem mm-hmm. 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 and I was my arm was killing me my uh, my hand mm-hmm. was swollen and mm-hmm. it was like I'm not going to admit that I hurt here no problem bye mm-hmm. and the ambulance mm-hmm. went off but you're right. We just don't admit that we have a potential balance problem. So right. tell, yeah. us, tell us about yeah. medications first. Like what, what to be careful about with medication yeah. in terms of what well, not to take. So, yeah, I think the advice is usually to go and like talk to your doctor about medications. But mm-hmm. what we know is that doctors are often very busy. Yeah. They may not even be entirely aware of which medications are associated with falls. And they may not really take all the effort to help you identify the risky medications yeah. Yeah. and reconsider them unless you really ask. So um, because this has been an issue, the Center for Disease Control in the United States created this whole initiative called STEADY with these like cheat sheets for health providers and how to do it. 
um, you know, to make it easier for them. But what's wonderful is all of this is available on the internet and people can look at it themselves and see. And so um, based on that, the medications to look out for are medications that affect your brain and medications that affect your blood pressure. So the brain ones are things like um, sedatives, things that people take for sleeping. People often don't realize that even though they might feel okay the next day, when we do careful studies, we see that people's balance is off. The next day. So, yeah. mm-hmm. That they, the balance they may have slept is, well, but they, they now, the next day is Yeah, well. I mean, you don't feel differently, but actually when they do those subtle, you know, they'll put people, these are tests yeah. that they do just for research. They put them on a special um, surface where they test their balance. They'll see that the balance is decreased. Wow. And we also know that older people who take those medications have a higher fall risk. So sedatives... Um, there's another class of medication that's called anticholinergics. They're medications that, again, tend to make people drowsy and also give them dry mouth. People may not realize that they're taking it. Um, Antidepressants, surprisingly enough, are also associated with increased um, fall risk, and a lot of women are taking antidepressants. So what the doctor is supposed to do is help you review your medications, identify all the ones that could be associated with an increased fall risk, and then either stop, switch, or reduce. Mm -hmm. So either stop the medication if possible, switch to a safer alternative, or reduce the lower dose. And often stopping or lower dose can be possible Mm -hmm. if you find a non-drug way to manage that problem. So, you know, insomnia, for instance, could be managed instead of with a sedative, with a program to sort of help you relearn how to fall asleep. That's sometimes called cognitive behavioral therapy. So I really encourage, um, and I can share with you, I made a list on my website of 10 types of medication to talk to the doctor about. That's great. That's really helpful. I, yeah. I really encourage people, you know, beyond saying, I'll to ask my doctor about my medicines, to really look, carefully look through the list and ask themselves, are they taking any of these medications? Another, I mentioned earlier, blood pressure medicines. Yeah. Some people are being probably taking a little bit more than they need, and their blood pressure might be falling when they stand. Um, And so sometimes dialing that back a little bit. And these are all things that your doctor can help you with, but they may not do it unless you really go and ask. Because I have a lot of people tell me, well, I told my doctor he didn't do anything. And then I look at their medication list and they're on all those medicines. So, you know, if if you do your homework and go in, you can get a little bit more. So that's what I would say, you know, in terms of medications. And then um, exercise is an interesting one. I think everybody knows that, you know, they should exercise. It's good yeah. for your health. It's good for your balance. It's good for your body. I mean, it's true. It's the, yeah. it's the wonder drug. It's drive. true. <laughs> um, yeah. But what we need to keep in mind is that there are four types of exercise that are recommended for older adults. There's sh- exercise that works on strength, that builds strength. There's endurance exercise. There's flexibility exercise. And then there are exercises that specifically work your balance. And for preventing falls, it's especially important to work on things that build lower leg strength and balance. And what people don't realize is that walking alone is not enough. So I have a podcast and I once interviewed this um, woman who has a doctorate in physical therapy and is a specialist in fall prevention and was actually given a grant by the Center for Disease Control to help disseminate this particular um, physical therapy exercise program that has been proven to reduce falls by 35%. It's called Mm. Otago. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who told me, you know, walking is not enough. People think walking is enough. It's not. And Sorry, what what was it called again? Otago? It's called Otago. Okay. Okay. And and I can share... Um, a link to the interview with her, which is yes, really interesting. Yes, that would also, be great. <laughs> I have a page with videos kind of Perfect. Um, explaining and showing some of the exercises. And so it turns out that a lot of older people who fall, um, when they're tested, show signs of lower than um, low leg strength or poor balance. And it's actually not that hard to test them. There are three little tests that um, even your doctor could do it, but it's probably a physical therapist will be better at doing them. But it's things like having an older person start seated in a chair and get up out of the chair, walk 10 feet, turn around, sit back down. Mm -hmm. How long does that take them? There's another one where the older person sits in a chair that's against the wall. You cross your arms over um, your thing and you stand up and sit down without touching. But also how many times can you stand up like that in 30 seconds? And then there's another one where it's called the four stage balance test where Um, we have older people stand, um, in four positions, um, and see how long they can stand. And one is just standing with your two feet next to each other like this. 
And then with your foot one halfway in mm -hmm. front of the other. Mm -hmm. There we go. Got it. And then there's tandem where you sort of have heel to toe like okay. that. Yeah. And if you try it, it's, you know, it's quite a lot harder to stand in tandem without holding anything. Yes. And yeah. then on, on one foot either way. And um, so those are the three, uh, three of the assessment tests, which are actually included as part of Otago, but also many physical therapists can do. So often when somebody's fallen, if we do those assessments, we find that they're actually have, you know, some balance difficulties or have lower leg strength. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then you want to do an exercise program that is specifically designed to help you work on those. Yeah. And Otago is one of them. There are probably others, or if you're doing your own exercise plan, it should help you work on those. And, and if you work on it, you should actually be able to see improvement within a few months. Okay. So I think people often don't realize that they just go and like find some exercise, but it's actually important to one, be assessed for that low leg strength and balance difficulties, and then do something that's really specifically going to help you work on that. And that so, can make a difference. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned walking is not enough because so many women say, um, I don't exercise, but I do walk a lot. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you're saying that that may be good for other things, but for this, how do you increase the, the lower leg? I mean, is, I mean, yoga, of course, is some yoga exercises. I know there's one, that I think, the tree, I think, where you stand on one foot. And you basically, or you bring your your leg up against your knee, your one leg up against your knee and stand yeah. on one foot. But that's the only exercise I can think of with yoga that specifically got to do with balance other than just good posture. Um, tai yeah. Chi, I think, is another exercise which yeah, is, yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah. But tai Chi else? actually <laughs> has a good record for fall uh -huh. prevention. Yeah. So that's quite good. Um, I mean, I think if your audience wants to see s specific exercises, actually on that page where mm -hmm. I have the Otago right. videos, yeah. um, I, I put in little YouTube, embedded the YouTube videos for all the different exercises that the therapists use. Mm -hmm. So people can see, people shouldn't try to do the program alone, but you can see actually really specific examples of what kinds of things work um, the strength. And then the other thing is, so I, you're supposed to do Otago with a physical therapist um, over six months. You know, it's a sort of longer program. Mm -hmm. And what they are supposed to do is progressively add weights to increase okay. the effort. Okay. So that's part of it, too. Okay. So, um, so yeah, walking is wonderful. I, I mean, I love walking. I encourage, I love it when, you know, my older patients walk. I encourage everybody to walk. And especially if you've been having falls, you need to think about doing something more, mm -hmm. something more structured. And I would encourage people to, you know, to discuss it with their doctor to ask about a physical therapy consultation yeah. um, where they can have that balance and strength specifically evaluated. And then to, um, and so then you can either do the program that the therapist recommends, but experts such as Dr. Tiffany Schubert, who has the PhD in physical therapy, she recommends a structured program because then you're kind of following a proven recipe. Yeah, yeah. You know, the trouble with medicine, healthcare, is that clinicians are quite autonomous and they get to suggest whatever they want. Mm. And they are trained and many of them are very experienced. And sometimes it works really well, but sometimes it doesn't. Whereas mm. when you follow sort of a, a defined structured recipe that has been shown to work well for people, you just have better chances that your time and effort put into it is going to get you mm -hmm. what you want, which in this case is more strength, more stability, fewer falls, and, and just a healthy a better life. For living yeah. your life right? Well, to summarize, I mean, I, th I think yeah. you've covered so many good topics here, but I was lo I'm looking at the list that we that I took from your website, which is these are the bits. So if you, if you just want a quick checklist here, it's to check your bone density, make sure that your bones are, are strong, uh, practice yeah. balance exercises like yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, uh, review your medications like you were talking mm -hmm. about at the beginning, um, mm -hmm. check your blood pressure and also the medications that you're taking so that you're not mm -hmm. um, you know, d dealing with blood pressure pressure as a balance issue and then yes. I think stay hydrated which is mm -hmm. one that you mentioned um, earlier so mm -hmm. I think that that's really um, some great, great advice if you're having problems with your balance um, mm -hmm. I just think it's so important and yeah I am going to add just a brief yeah, word please. about the bone density as yeah. you mentioned yeah. so yeah I mean I think the people that the thing that everyone fears is a hip fracture or a really bad mm -hmm. injury mm -hmm. and we do know that um, most people who fracture their hip have low bone mineral density yeah and weren't treated for it. And so I do want to say that um, it's important to, you know, that's part of preventing the injury from the fall. Now, people who do exercises are also less likely to get injured, but it is important to be screened for osteoporosis at least once if you're an older woman. 
And I know people are often a little worried about taking medication and treatment. That's something to discuss and look into. But, you know, if they tell you your bone mineral density is really low, then you should think about medication. And if it's just a little low, then there are lifestyle um, ways to improve your bone density and be careful about it. But that's an important factor in avoiding a bad injury. Well, I think that, that distinction is really important. That falling is one thing, but, her, mm-hmm. but breaking a bone when you fall, or, or fracturing a, your your bone when you when you fall, is another thing. So mm-hmm. get the balance right, and then you know that you won't fall. But if you do fall with good blood, good bone density, and you know, healthy body, you'll bounce a little and you'll, you yeah. won't have such you'll a bad injury. You'll be less likely to be badly hurt and have to change your life, okay. which is what we're all hoping to avoid. Well, I really feel encouraged by it because um, mm. since I'm a person that's fallen a couple of times, only mm-hmm. twice, I, that's the truth. Um, you know, I actually really feel like I have got some work to do on, with balance and um, my yoga practice is, for me, is helping, but I think you've given us a lot of really good information. So mm. I would encourage you to go up to Leslie website betterhealthwhileaging.net and it's just a wealth of information especially the videos you mentioned uh, I'd love you to send me that link mm-hmm, for certainly. people to view yeah I will so, so thank you so much I feel like I'm completely educated now no more fools <laughs> oh well you are on the right track you know taking action is the way to get started thank you so much for inviting me thank you Leslie take care If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our 60 and Me YouTube channel and also visit our website. We are a strong and dynamic community of women over 60. We're challenging aging stereotypes and every day we share fascinating stories, interesting questions and great conversation.